How's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna be doing an overview of DynamoDB Global Tables. And if you haven't heard of Global Tables before, it's a feature that was announced in 2017, and it is a mechanism to synchronize your data across different databases that are hosted in other regions. So say for instance, you can have a database in North America, and then you can have a copy of that database in something like Europe or Asia, and you can write to any one of those databases and sync that database across. Now, why that's a useful feature that's something that we're going to get into in this video uh, so in terms of the contents of this video what we're going to be going over is we're going to talk about what global tables are i kind of gave you a little bit of a preview of that then we're going to talk about how global tables work Third, we're gonna talk about some of the pitfalls or gotchas that you should be aware of if you're thinking about using global tables in your application. And then finally, I'm gonna do a walkthrough in the AWS console where we're gonna set up a global table and just play with the data a little bit, see how when you write to one, it gets synchronized to other tables. So first and foremost, what are global tables? So global tables are simply a collection of replica tables that are distributed across different regions in AWS. So what that means is that changes to one table are propagated into others seamlessly. And the mechanism that AWS uses to do this is something called DynamoDB streams. And DynamoDB streams allow you to hook in to receive change events that occur on a DynamoDB table. So whenever a change event occurs on one table, it'll listen to the stream and pipe that into the other tables that exist on the other regions. And if you'd like to learn more about what DynamoDB streams are and how they work exactly, I have a couple videos on that. I'll put that in the description section below. And third, it allows users to interact with the closest table for the best performance. So this is really the main use case that global tables solve. If you have different databases that exist in different geographic regions, we can set up our service such that the customer is always interacting with the database that is in closest proximity to them. And this is to ensure the best possible performance for our customer's requests. And finally, global tables are a fully managed solution. So all you really need to do to set up global tables is just click a few buttons in the DynamoDB console. And then from there, you just sit back and watch it work. And I'm going to show you an example of exactly how this works during the walkthrough section later in this video. Now, in order to demonstrate how global tables work, I'd like to look at an example diagram that I pulled off of the AWS website. Uh, so what are we looking at here? So we're seeing the fact that we have globally dispersed users so that they can exist anywhere in the world. We have a global application in the middle here that can be used by any of our users, no matter where they live. And then finally, we have replicas down here. So a replica in North America, a replica in Europe, and a replica of Asia. So these are all copies of the same table that are being synchronized when changes occur on one of them. So how does this all work from a practical perspective? Well, us as the user, we interact with the global application, either through our phones or maybe through a website, and we interact with some backend service that is handling the API requests that we're making to this application. Well, that backend service needs to have logic built in to know that this request is coming from a particular region and then knows to hit the corresponding database. So in other terms, if I'm a user that's maybe located on the west coast of North America over here, when this request comes into the global application, my application will need to have some kind of routing logic to say, hey, this person's from North America, I should send the request to the North America database. That's really all it comes down to. Now, there's a couple great redundancy features that are built into global tables. So essentially, it supports regional outages. So say, for instance, we have a regional outage, and now North America is down, this database is no longer accessible. Like I said, we can have this kind of middleware here that decides which database to send it to. And since we know now that this application is down in North America, or this database is down rather, we can instead route our traffic to just Europe and Asia. So that's one of the cool features about this. Now, the neat thing about this as well is that when this comes back online, so when North America, you know, I don't want to erase this here, but when it goes back online, all of the data that took place in the time during the outage will eventually be synchronized to the North America table. So it's a very, very useful feature because when this thing comes back online, it'll be primed and ready to go with all the changes that occurred on the other tables in your global table cluster. 
So that's a little bit about how it works. Now in terms of pricing, I just kind of want to back up here and get all this junk off of the screen for you. Now in terms of pricing, you're going to essentially have three different tables that exist, right? So instead of just paying for one table as you normally would, if you're using DynamoDB, you're going to have to pay three times the cost because the data is going to be synchronized over all of the other databases. So definitely you'll have to pay for the write throughput that's going to be kind of replicated across these other tables. Now the read costs are going to be depending on your access pattern. So, you know, if you use Asia a lot, then you're going to have a lot of read costs there. If you don't use it very much, then you'll have very low. So it really depends on your usage patterns in terms of the read. But like I said, the write capacity is going to be pretty much one to one on all the different databases, assuming they stay in consistent state at all times. So that's a little bit about how global tables work on the back end. And like I said before, they utilize DynamoDB streams in order to make this happen. Now, from the usability perspective, like if I'm a developer now, how do I kind of interact with these tables separately? Well, it's very, very easy. You just point your query to whatever table that you want to. There's no real special uh, logic that you need to do to say this is a global table query. All of these tables exist independently. So from the application layer, you just interact with whichever one is closest to you and you rely on the fully managed nature of this solution to synchronize that data across to the other databases in the other regions. So that's how DynamoDB global tables work. Let's move on now to the next section and talk about some of the pitfalls or gotchas that you should be aware of if you are using global tables. So the first one that I was kind of alluding to before was that you need to have business logic to detect and respond to regional outages. So as I mentioned, if North America went out in that example, you need to have logic that says, hey, North America is down. I need to start redirecting these requests to Europe or Asia. It would be really nice if this was automatically built in, but at the current point in time, this isn't a case that is automatically detected and handled by the global tables feature. Now, second, there are some nasty race conditions that can occur due to the nature of global tables. So what we're saying here is we have concurrent update race conditions that can cause stale data and the mechanism that it uses to resolve these conditions is, is last writer wins. So let's just go back really quick to this diagram and kind of demonstrate what this actually means. So say for instance, we have a user that writes some record into DynamoDB in North America. Now we know that this data is eventually going to to be replicated over to the Asia cluster. So say for instance, we are performing a update on record one in North America. That's the primary key. Now there is a possibility that in between the time that the write succeeded on this database and the time that it took to replicate that data into the other database, if another user in between that time came and queried for record one on the Asia database, they would get the original version of that data, not the data that has been written to the North America version of this table. Now for this reason, you can get some nasty conditions where if you have reads and writes that are taking place in different regions in very close temporal proximity, you can have this case of uh, stale data. And it gets even worse if you're writing to both of these tables at once from different regions. What DynamoDB Global Tables uses to resolve this is strong eventual consistency. So it uses the timestamp of both of the updates that occurred on the different tables and whichever one had the oldest timestamp, so essentially took place first, that's the one that will win. So these are kind of subtleties that you need to think about when you're considering using global tables, because if you have a use case where you're gonna be writing to different tables in different regions for the same IDs, you can have some really problematic scenarios. So take this into account when you're planning on using uh, global tables in your application. So let's move back to where I was before. Uh, where were we? Concurrent update, okay. And yeah, so there's no cross region strong consistency. So like I kind of said, there's no data guarantees. Now what that means is that you can still use things like transactions, so transactional queries on your DynamoDB table. And if you don't know what transactions are, what transactions are in the context of DynamoDB, I have another video on that that I'll put in the description section below as well. But essentially going back into this point here, so you can perform transactional updates on a single region's DynamoDB table. But like we said before, there's this stale writer, last writer wins kind of resolution mechanism. So even though your transactional update succeeds on one region's table, there's no guarantee that all of that data is going to be replicated 
to the other regions tables. So be aware of these conditions. There are some very distinct subtleties that can cause some very difficult to debug bugs in your application. So that about covers it for the pitfalls and the gotchas and just kind of what DynamoDB global tables are. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a practical example. So a walkthrough in the AWS console, where I'm gonna create some global tables and kind of show you how the data replicates from one table to another in different regions. So here we go. Okay guys, so here we are in the AWS console. So first things first, let's go to the DynamoDB section so that we can go and create our table. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create table here and let's just create a table called transactions. And for my table, I want my partition key to be just something called transaction ID. Uh, it doesn't really matter here. You can kind of play with this and use whatever combination that you want, but uh, this is what we're using for this example. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create now and let me just expand this out. And now this table is being automatically created for us. So we just kind of need to wait around until unfortunately this succeeds. Sometimes it can take a few minutes. Oh, we can see here that it was pretty quick. So that's great. So let's go ahead and create the global table now. So let's click on our table that we just created. And you can see here on these tabs up at the top, there's a tab called global tables. And that's what we want to click on for this example. Now, to, it says here to create a global table, ensure that DynamoDB streams are enabled. And this is kind of what I was talking about before. You need to have that mechanism to synchronize that data across your other tables. So right off the bat, DynamoDB is complaining to us. We can see right here streams and it's giving us kind of a warning signal saying it's disabled. So we need to do that first or else this isn't going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here that says enable streams and it just gives us one option. So new and old images, we're going to click on enable and you can see the rotating spinner here sometimes this does take a little bit of time on its own uh, but there's a couple other things that we need to do prior to getting this set up correctly uh, so you see it succeeded now and I just kind of want to show you what happens if we try to add a region without doing anything else so I'm gonna click on the add region button here and once this resolves, there we go. So we can now select the region we wanna replicate this data into. So you can see in the top right corner here, I am in US East one, which is North Virginia. So let's say I want to replicate this into EU West one, which is Ireland. Uh, so we see here that the region is ready. Click OK or click Create Replica to make this work. And you can see here we just got an error. And what is this saying? Table write capacity should be either pay per request or auto scaled. So right now we are using the default in this table, which is DynamoDB provision capacity. So if we go over to the capacity tab and we take a look at this, we're seeing that we're using provision. Now there's two options here to get this to work. What you can do is either enable auto scaling and keep it on provision. So enable auto scaling for read and write. And then we can just click on save and go back and everything will work fine with the global tables or we can switch it to on demand and this is just giving us a little bit of a warning here but on demand essentially means that whatever demand that you're placing on your DynamoDB cluster all the capacity that's required for that is going to be automatically provisioned for you now there are pros and cons of using either of these uh, from an availability perspective to prevent throttling and such and i have a whole video on this the difference between the two and when you would use one or the other but for this purpose all we really need to do is either enable auto scaling or set it to on demand so i'm just going to enable auto scaling for this click these little boxes here we're going to leave all these settings default here i'm not going to go into them and just click on save so essentially what this means is that with auto scaling enabled the database is just going to kind of scale up or down in order to to satisfy the demand on our cluster and the reason why this is important if we kind of think back to the example that we were talking about before your data needs to synchronize across different databases in different regions now if you have a scenario where a database in one region has more capacity than a database in another it's possible that the database in that other region that has lower capacity will fall behind of what's occurring on that other table. So in order to make sure this works and you kind of have a balance of uh, capacity, you need to ensure either auto scaling is enabled or you have on demand. So I'm not gonna go much more into that other than that, but let's uh, go back to the global table section now and try to do this. I think I already clicked save. Yeah, I did, it's grayed out. So let's go to global tables now and then try and click on add region. 
So let's do this again. Let's change this to US West 1, which is Ireland. Again, the region is ready. Go ahead and click on Create Replica, and we shouldn't get any errors now. Um, so it's creating the replica. I don't think we have to actually wait on this screen. Oh, okay, so it's just uh, give us the thumbs up here. So we just kind of need to wait around until this gets completed. So what is actually happening behind the scenes is that, you know, we're in US East 1, right? So we have US East 1 here and we created the table originally in US East 1. So what DynamoDB is doing right now is it's going to EU West 1 and creating a table that has the identical schema of this table that we created in this region. So in a few moments, once this is all completed, we'll be able to go to EU West 1 region and see an exact one for one copy of this table. So I'm just going to let this step finish up now and then I'll bring you to uh, EU West 1 and show you that there's two separate tables that now exist, one in each respective region. So I'll come back in a few moments here when this is all done. Okay guys, so this finally finished. It took about five minutes or so, but if we take a look down in the global table section here, we can see that we have something different that wasn't here before. So we can see now we have two regions that are specified here for this transactions table. We have US East 1, which is where I originally created the table, and we have EU West 1, which is where all this data is also being projected to. So now let's go over to EU West 1 and we're going to confirm that this table actually exists. But before we do that, I just want to kind of prove to you that this table is completely empty. We are in the transactions table. There is nothing in here. Uh, so let's go over to EU West 1 now and just confirm that that table exists. So I just clicked on Ireland over there. And again, we have a transactions table that I just created. And if we go to the global table section, you'll see the exact same screen that we saw on the US East one side. So let's uh, kind of test this out and play with it a little bit. So uh, items, we're gonna create an item here. And we're gonna say transaction ID is transaction ID one. We're gonna click save. And now we have a item in our table with transaction ID one. Okay, that's perfect. Let's go back to US East one now and confirm that it's actually there. And there you go. So that table automatically got replicated from Europe to US East one. Now, conversely, we can also delete this item. And if this works as you would expect, it should be deleted on EU West one as well. So now let's go back again and just confirm that it actually happened. And you can see now the transactions table. There's nothing here in this database anymore. So if you enjoyed this video, I have a whole bunch of DynamoDB videos on my channel. I'll put a playlist in the top left here so that you can take a look. And as always, if you did enjoy, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.